Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Dominic from the Prime Time Treasure eBay store, coming to you from a top secret location at the Prime Time Treasure headquarters. This is an area where I'm going to show you some comic books. And as you know, if you've been watching these videos, comic books is the number one item that we sell at the Prime Time Treasure eBay store. And a lot of people get turned off by comic books because they didn't read them when they were younger. Uh, it wasn't something they were ever interested in. They don't feel that they know much about it, and so they pass up on them. Now, some comic books are worth pa passing up on, but others are not. And sometimes you could find these at garage sales. Uh, it's a little challenging to find them there, but you can sometimes find them there. Uh, other times you could find them uh, advertised for sale on Craigslist. So I want to talk to you about some really key points, and then in other videos I'll go over some things in more detail. But... As a general rule of thumb, what you're trying to do is you're trying to buy large collections of comic books. So what I mean, buy them by the hundreds, buy them by the thousands for anywhere between 10 and 20 cents a book. On average, that would be around 15 cents. And that's really where I aim to get them for. If I could get them for lower than that, that's great. So some collections, I'll wind up getting them for 12 cents, some 10 cents, some 15 cents, some 8 cents, and some have even, I've made one incredible deal once where I got them for about 2 cents a book. When you get them for that low, then you can easily make your money back very fast, and then everything above that is profit. So for example, this collection that you see here in this short box is only part of a much larger set of comic books that I purchased for $140. So I've already made my money back from the collection and tonight somebody offered me $75 for 31 of these comic books. And these 31 comic books are from a series called Moon Knight. Now Moon Knight is a popular character in the Marvel Universe and the reason why these particular books sold for $75 is because they are part of a set. So these are the full 30 stories that are part of one of the volumes. And you can see here, um, the issue number is right up top. So you can see that's issue number one. And then down here, that's issue number two. So that tells your issue number, that's issue number three. Now, if you know a lot about comic books, this part's gonna seem boring, but for people who have no knowledge about it whatsoever, you need to have that little basic primer about it, okay? So, if you could find that you have a complete set of something, whether it's 30 books, or whether it's four books, because there's something called mini series, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, then, it's very easy to go onto eBay and see who else is selling that set or that complete mini series and for what price. And what you basically want to do is say, okay, all things being equal, let's assume my books are in near mint condition uh, and someone else is selling a complete set in near mint condition. Well, and that person has 100% feedback and I have 100% feedback, well, I'm gonna put my price $5 less. And I guarantee you that you are gonna make the sale uh, in the vast majority of cases because what the collector is looking for is who's selling that complete set for the lowest amount of money in great condition. So that's what you're looking for. So you, obviously when you make a purchase, you wanna make sure that the books that you get are in great condition. So uh, now, if they're very, very old books and they're valuable books, then you know, let's say you found like an early Batman from the '60s or the you know uh, early Spider-Man or something like that, and it has a little bit of damage on it. You know, don't pass something like that up. But you don't want to buy modern age comic books. So books, you know, after 1985, for example, that are ripped up, damaged, wrinkled, crinkled, soiled all that type of stuff, you know, water damage to it. Those are ones you definitely want to try to avoid. As a general rule of thumb, if they come in a bag and a board for protection, that's usually a good sign that the collector kept them in good condition. Now, sometimes you'll see some of these bags and boards that they're damaged and they're yellowed and they're just gross looking and they're wrinkly and everything. And that, you know, you have to check into that. But if they're clear like this, 
and you know they look nice and neat and straight and you don't see any wrinkles on the back of the board that's a pretty good sign but what you could do is just to do a, a little spot inspection is you peel it off take the book out look through it a little flip through check out if any of everything looks okay and then do a couple other spot checks like that and if so you know and everything checks out okay you're probably in pretty good shape there so that's one thing to look for is to look for complete sets complete sets very valuable another thing to look for are variant editions now this actually is a moon knight comic book that comes from that set of 30 that I had. But what I did is I did a little bit of research and I just pulled this one out to sell it separately. The reason is because this particular single book is worth about $17 in the type of condition it is. And the reason why it's worth more is because it's known as a variant edition. What that means is that this comic book has a different cover than the regular cover that was originally printed. So this is the original cover. And let me show you something about this on the UPC code. You see here how it says 111. That means it's issue number one, as you could see up here. It's the first cover, so it's the original cover, and it's the first printing, okay? But this one on the bottom says 131. First issue again, but it's the third cover, and it's a first printing. Now up top there, it says variant edition, so that's another way to tell it's a variant. Variants aren't always worth more than the original cover, but sometimes they are. If the artist that did the variant cover, that drew it, uh, is a famous artist and uh, you know is known for you know really good work. Uh, and also if there's something unique about the way the cover was drawn, that could also be really helpful. So this one is called a sketch variant cover. Those tend to be pretty popular. Um, it was done by a famous artist, and so this one is worth more money. So this one I pulled out, and that one's listed on eBay for $17, and I did not include that with this original set. If this book was not worth much, if it was only worth $3, $2, then I just would have tossed it in with the, with the other books and advertised it as a variant. Um, uh, being included in the lot. Now, depending on the set that you have and who's in the set, you can um, have a smaller set of books with the same character that's actually worth more money. So for example, this one that I'm going to show you here is a series called Vengeance of the Moon Knight, and this one has 10 issues to it. This one is actually worth about $95, and that's what I have it up for right now on eBay. And the reason why it's worth more isn't solely because of Moon Knight, although he is a popular character. It isn't because it's a complete set, but it's because in some of the later issues, and it's these here, so this is issues 7 and 8, this character appears in it. This character is known as Deadpool. He kind of looks a little like Spider-Man, but he carries a sword. He is super, super, super popular. And if you see Deadpool on a comic book, it means money in your pocket. So that uh, character being in this series caused the series to increase in value significantly. So this is again about a $95 set. Now, what I did with this is that, you know, when you buy a collection, you're sometimes going to have some books that when you look into it, they don't sell for much. They're not worth much. It's not even worth putting it online. But that doesn't mean that you should just throw them out. What you do is you just kind of tack them on to some of these other series to make them more enticing for the buyer. So you add value. And that's how you make good sales is you add value for your buyer. So for example, this one here, you could say, see it's called Moon Knight, Silent Knight. If you look it on an eBay, it doesn't really sell. But what I did is I added it to this collection. So now when a buyer is looking at two different sets that are similar in terms of price and they're similar in terms of condition and both buyers have similar feedback ratings, well, I'm adding an extra book in here. 
that collector is probably going to purchase this and say, hey, I get an extra book, plus this guy's selling it for a little bit less. And again, I could sell it for less because I got a great price on it initially and I made my money back really fast. So a um, few other things just to keep in mind is uh, I just want to show you what I was talking about with the mini series. So if you're not familiar with that, mini series will look like this. It will say something like two of six, or it might say two of four. Mini series are usually in three, four, six, but sometimes they're longer than that. There could be nine, there could be 12, but so it says two of six. Now this is issue one, and it doesn't say one of six on this one because this issue is a variant cover. So the variant cover of a limited edition series doesn't always say that it's of a certain number. But that is part of the series. You can see it's called X-Men Deadly Genesis. Then you've got two of six, three of six, four of six, five of six, and six of six. So again, you just take that, you compare it on eBay to who else is selling that same exact set in, simil in a similar condition. And because you got it for a good price, you just put it and price it for a little bit lower and you can make great money on complete sets. Now, again, you're not always going to have complete sets and that's fine. So for example, here's a bunch of X-Men books. Now X-Men goes up into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. So I'm not going to have hundreds and hundreds of them here, um, you know, to sell all at once. So I might only have a group of 15 of them, for example, but that's okay. So you just take those 15 and you say, here's a lot of 15 X-Men comic books and you just sell them that way. And you, what you want to do though, before you list them is you want to make sure you look them up individually to see if anything important happened in that particular book to make it more valuable than the others. Cause that might be one that you want to sell uh, off individually. Now you might wonder, well, how am I going to know that? How do I, how do I figure that out? Very simple. Just go on to comicspriceguide.com. That's comics with an S priceguide.com. I'll put the link below in the description section. You sign up for a free account. I have no affiliation with them by the way, but you, uh, sign up for a free account. Once you sign in and log in and you type in, let's say for example, you type in X-Men 188 it's going to tell you how much they think that it's worth, but that's not really why I use it. I don't really use it for that because what they say it's worth doesn't always match up to what the market says. So they might say a book is only worth $4, but then you go on eBay and because of whatever's currently going on in the market, it's actually worth 20. Or they might say some old Mickey Mouse book, you know, from the fifties is worth $70, but on eBay, you could actually get it for five. So it doesn't always match up what the price guides say to what the market is actually doing. So keep that in mind. But what you might see is X-Men, 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 X-Men has all the different issues. 188, 189, 190, 192, 191. And it's telling, it says they're worth $4, $5, $4, $5. But then you see another one, it jumps out and it says this one's worth $70. Well, okay. Even though it might not literally be exactly worth $70, maybe it's worth a little more, maybe it's worth a little less, it's still telling you that there's something special about that issue. And you want to pull that one aside and you want to sell that one differently. You want to sell it individually. And what Comics Price Guide will do for what they call key issues, important issues, is that they will... Uh, tell you what it is about that book that makes it special. Was there a famous character that died? Was it the first appearance of a certain character? Um, you know, something happened in that book to make it more valuable. It will tell you, and that's good. So then you could advertise that type of information on eBay. So um, that probably just about does it for this uh, introductory uh, discussion about actual value of comic books. I do have another video up, which I'll link to at the end, which tells you about how to properly uh, pack and ship comic books safely so that they don't get damaged. So just look down below and you'll see that at the end of the video. And if you have questions about anything that I said, because I can't possibly cram all the nuances into this one video, uh, please drop a comment down below and ask me 
Uh, also, if you have other questions or other videos that you'd like to see about comic books, please let me know and I will be happy to uh, do a video on that. But it's real, real important that you subscribe to this channel because that lets me know that you are enjoying these videos and that you do want to see more of them. And also, make sure that you pound that like button down below, give me a big thumbs up, and come back to check out more videos. Thanks, everybody.